Hello and welcome to Skullsy Talks Wrestling. I'm a fan. I love wrestling. I love the fandom of wrestling. Okay? I sniff the toes of professional wrestling. Let's get into episode two. I won't lie, growing up as a teenager, watching pornography with my mates, having a slice of pizza, while they wanted to see the boobs and the arse and the big cocks, obviously, I wanted to know the storyline. I wanted the storyline of what the plumber was doing, all right? I wanted the backstory of why the wife didn't love her husband anymore. Yes, I was that guy, and that's the same reason why I watch professional wrestling, okay? I am there... For the gimmicks. I am there for the storylines. I am there for everything about that element of this great piece of beautiful and artistic entertainment that is offered to us fans. And we're so lucky currently because when I was a kid, you could only watch WCW if the Cartoon Network turned off. All right? You watch WWF, that's all we had. And eventually we did get the great amazing, incredible ECW, all right? Now, the thing about it is, the beautiful thing about professional wrestling when I grew up, we had the absolutely incredible BWO, Nova, Stevie, Meanie, spoofing and taking the piss out of absolutely everything that was on. We got the Meanie dance, we got everything. We had Raven that based his whole entire logic of his character of grunge. And a Poe poem called Raven. Raven to me is a fucking genius when it comes to professional wrestling. Anything he does. And what he's doing in Major League Wrestling currently is great stuff. We even had the incredible and beautiful elements of comic books within professional wrestling. We just have to use Shane Helms. Shane Helms, and I just want to first say this. Before being the Hurricane, in WCW, he was the man. He was the cruiserweight king. With people like Billy Kingdom and Rey Mysterio and so. But The Hurricane was based on a comic book character. It was a kind of a Green Lantern sort of film. And I'm a comic book guy. I'm a comic book guy. So I got it. I felt it. I loved it. And everything he did in that element. We had the great. The great gold dust. That inspired a generation. Inspired a generation of wrestlers to live gimmicks in that element and now we have people like Dan Housen, we have Dan the dad man, we have Dan the dad really really underrated probably wrestler in the sense jump onto um, one of the indie things or just put me to google and you'll find him, we also have people like Orange Cassidy alright and the gimmick and storyline based wrestling is what brought me in alright and keeps me going a lot So, we've talked about the characters, okay? But I also love the storylines, the juice, the meat. Some of the best storylines ever in professional wrestling. The male, he the major heel turn of Nexus. Dreamer and Raven, two year feud on ECW. Joe and Angle leading up to one of the greatest pay-per-views in my perspective of all time, TNA Lockdown. 2008 we had the nwo takeover the very current bloodline story great stuff as well and the long teased vince's bastard son which is very underrated and which if you haven't seen it's definitely definitely worth getting on there i'm also a swoggle horn swoggle fan swoggle for life and all that sort of jazz but listen to me listen to me wrestling excites me this much and this week We've had two incredible bits of news. Incredible bits of news in the last 10 days anyway. We've had two big signings. And both of these signings in wrestling terms, I personally think are big, are humongous, are interesting, are everything you want. So, 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 there has been two big signings in professional wrestling this week. Um, we have seen... We have seen big signings before. And with there being so many free agents these days, okay, wanting to work with all promotions, it's always a big deal looking at a um, free agent. It's like 
I was thinking about this earlier on, that we have so many promotions, so many free agents could go to. And it's exciting stuff. Look, we have NWA, we have Major League Wrestling, we have Impact, soon to be TNA, whoop, okay? We have AEW, we have the crown jewel being WWE, okay? And the biggest free, the free agent currently on the market, after Heath Slater or Heath Miller or just Heath, is Ric Flair. Is Ric Flair. And he has signed for AEW. Signed for AEW. We hear on um, Rick's podcast all the time that he's had conversations with Tony before. He's talked to Tony. He's friends with Tony. He knows Tony on a personal element. Okay? But Rick is in that golden bunch of wrestlers that could do good promos, that could wrestle, that could tell storylines, along with Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant was a circus act, fundamentally. He was a circus gimmick, fundamentally, when it comes down to it, in the sense of how he toured around the territories and stuff like that. Okay, but he could tell a story, and that's beautiful. Okay, we had Dusty Rhodes. Easily, 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 easily. Okay, one of the best promo artists of all time. And also, also, a guy that would go all the way for any promotion it was in. He would wear polka dots. He would cut up his head. All right. He would, when he was struggling, go and do some business with ECW. And then we have, it kind of feels like he's a mortal sting. And he's had a great little run at AEW. And from what I'm understanding, Ric Flair, the two-time Hall of Famer, okay, the 16-plus world champion, which I think is more 21, is going to help the transition... Okay, of Ric Flair, of Sting, I mean, sorry, sorry, I mean Sting, retire. And he's going to be riding it out. That was the words Ric Flair has used. And also, he is going to be promoting his new energy drink, I reckon, like hell. Woo! 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 Energy! Oh, God, man. Do you know, I've been looking for this in the UK, it's hard to get, so... Woo! I need some woo energy in me. Okay, I need some Wu Energy drink. And I think this is a big deal for AEW. I think Tony's been clever. This isn't like TNA, when he signed for TNA, where he did that uh, <laughs> where he did that nice nice time period with TNA. And, and you know what, I didn't think it was a bad. People cuss it quite a lot. I know Ric Flair said he needed money. But look, Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal, man, and Ric Flair, what they did together, woo, was great stuff and enjoyable stuff. Yeah, but I don't think that's the biggest signing of the week. I don't think that was the biggest signing of the week. So I am hope I get this British promotion correct. So Sova Pro, okay, the 18th of February, right, next year, will have Les Battersby. Les Battersby, man, from Coronation Street, making his wrestling debut at 70 years old. I did a little bit of research into the guy, and do you know what? I know him from Coronation Street. I know him from being the worst neighbours in the world. The family fundamentally from hell. Um, Chavy McChavy McChavy Northern folks. Okay. I live in the north so I can say that. Okay. Alright. That's all I knew about him. But when I did some interesting deep dive into the lad. I kind of feel for him in a lot of ways man. He um, in his younger days he found one of the victims of the Yorkshire Ripper. Bloody hell, I didn't know that. All right, if you don't know who the Yorkshire Ripper is, he, um, there's a guy called Ian Sutcliffe that was going around killing women and stuff like that, and he found one of the victims. Imagine how that psychologically he's fucked you up. Um, he lost his marriage, he lost absolutely everything. He got sacked for leaking sore, supposedly. Um, he lost his house. He lost everything, man. So this guy went from hero... Not a hero, but sort of like B class celebrity in the in the in the drama world, the soap world, to be a nothing man, to be a nothing. And I am loving how he's making a comeback. And this is the great thing about professional wrestling: celebrities, B class, celebrities, C class celebrities have always been able to move into wrestling. Okay, I mean Andy Kaufman, man, stand up co co comedian, the first claim to be intergender champion of the world. His his um, stuff that he did with Jerry Lawler back in the day, absolutely beautiful. You can find it all on YouTube, man. Find it on YouTube. You've got people like Mayweather jumped into wrestling. You got you've got people like Tyson Fury had a scrap with Braun Strowman. Okay, 
Who else you got? You got Logan Paul last night, Crown Jewel, beat Rey Mysterio. And he's now the USA champion. Do you know what I mean? So him doing work with Sova Pro, um, Bruce Jones or Les Battersby, as he has put this out, this is not a drill. This is not a parody. He's taking this seriously. He's 70 years old and he wants to go and win his scrap. And do you know what? For me, Ric Flair, great. What he signed in the last 10 days. Fantastic stuff. But this is a story, man. This is a story. I swing back to what I said at the beginning. What buys me into wrestling is the storylines, man. Is the gimmicks. And this is the kind of shiznick I love.